going forward uh for the other big news is you know for the first time in what nine years rcg announced an open house uh for them vendors and members of chamber of commerce why mm -hmm. do you think that they did that if i, I wanted to put on my arrogance hat or confidence hat, depending on how anybody watching this wants to frame it. I think that was a direct reaction to what you and I have been doing since April and May of this year, since the time of our first interview on WCTV, even to today, the, their PR has been bad because they haven't done any on their own. RCG has had a, a, almost a policy of not engaging the community, not being part of, they're members of the Chambers of Commerce, but they would not show up for events for a very long time, wouldn't, wouldn't show up. They didn't want to open the doors and let people come in. I mean, we had one in the whole, um, let's see, I left in 2021. So let's say the six years I was there at headquarters working as an employee during that time when we were on the campus, they only had one quasi, it was really a private event for a garden club. And they had people come around for a tour and look at the gardens and look at the grounds. That was like the closest thing they ever did to engaging with people outside the gates of RCG and allowing folks who are not members onto the campus that weren't, you know, serving them in some way. Sure, vendors can come on all the time because, you know, they're doing work for them. But as far as people from the outside who are not members or not interested in being members, they just want to enjoy the campus, which it is a beautiful campus. It's gorgeous. The grounds are beautiful. It's excellent. I mean, you, anybody would love to walk around and just enjoy it. It's beautiful. But that was the only time they have done that. And so it's just ironic that the timing of my website launching, our interviews happening, articles going up, uh, banned by HWA, publishing everything I publish, more and more people reaching out to me. Mem people who are currently members are reaching out to me. Former members are reaching out to me. And the timing of this was just very suspect. And it's like, oh, this is just damage control. They couldn't damage control enough in their own messages with the enablers at headquarters that, the, the, you know, I always put, quote, ministers getting up there and brainwashing people and telling them things uh, to put it in a way to change the way that they look at things. Oh, and they're putting spin on this and spinning on that. When I say brainwash, I don't mean like as in like literally brainwashing, but just psychological manipulation. When that wasn't doing enough, they needed because they they monitor what's going on here at Wadsworth. They monitor the Facebook Facebook monitor uh, Facebook group. They're reading all my articles. They're seeing what I'm saying. They're seeing what you're saying, what you're doing, what you're posting. They had to do something to try to staunch the bleeding of their public opinion in Wadsworth. And so they quote had this open house, inviting members of the only inviting members of the Chamber of Commerce and vendors to have a, hey, come and see. And they were so happy. For the first time in nine years, the Restored Church of God is opening our doors. It's like, yeah, why did it take you that long? Why are you doing it now? Huh, I wonder. Well, guess who's members of the Chamber of Commerce? <laughs> on TV. Um, and, and for multiple reasons, <laughs> it is a very great organization, great for networking. Um, we attended our first luncheon and I loved it because very informational when it came to, you know, talking about networking and social media and things like that, you know, because we're out there to help the people. We have several different series. So it, it is it just felt since we've been talking with them and did a show with them and it just felt natural to go with it. So we're members. Mm -hmm. And yes. then we um, got an email uh, for the open house from Restored Church of God. And um, yep. I went on the Even Bright and signed the entire team up. And clarification. Um, we are not employees of WCTV. We um, have the. Do you have a show that's hosted on it because yeah, WCTV we have a show that, a that they television. run on their cable network and things like that. But um, we were not going as to 
I know that there was some confusion. Um, people thought that we were representing WCTV. Nope, they are members of no. their own um, uh, for the Chamber of Commerce. So we registered, I registered the entire team and I got confirmation for it. And um, I did too. The same got, day I got my little ticket. Yeah, you got ticket. the digital ticket for the event. Mm -hmm. um, now, <laughs> what do you think their reaction was? Because of course they got notification. Their reaction was, you know, the three weeks leading up to the event i mean did they reach yeah, we, out to you the 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 open house was september actually that was just a week ago september 8th we registered in um middle of august with our real names this was not a stealth incursion this was not a we're gonna sneak in uh, Don registered my full name, her full name, and the other people that we are friends with to go with us. And we, I got an e-ticket, e-vite, and as well as you did with a ticket. And I thought, okay, it's an automated service. Clearly, they're going to react to this once they see our names. And you and I had many discussions over the next three weeks about, well, my, what's going on? We haven't heard anything. And then we also theorized like, well, what's going on? And I thought that there were a couple possibilities. Number one, they weren't checking the names on the list. They were just monitoring the numbers or they weren't looking at it every day. It was kind of like, oh, it's on my to-do list and I'll do it later. And just, you know, Dr. Ranny, Dr. Tim Ranny, who's the head of PR over at the Restore Church of God, you know, he was monitoring it some way. He had to be. But then the more time went on and week after week, as we got closer to the event, I didn't hear anything. You didn't hear anything. I even we we talked about how we were going to conduct ourselves and being members of the Chamber of Commerce, we were representing that body. And so to go there with any ill intent to cause a scene, to, to get anybody's face, to do anything unprofessional or untoward would have been completely would have been horrible on our part because we would have brought shame to the Wadsworth community. We would have brought shame to the Chamber of Commerce and we would have tarnished our own names within the community. And that would have been awful and foolish and stupid for us. If, what, what? So we can get up in Dave Pack's face and say, why'd you buy that house? I mean, you know, go out in a blaze of glory. That doesn't serve any purpose. So our intent, and I even prefaced you with, if they call you into, because I thought for sure, Don, I thought for sure they were going to call you and not me because I am the former member. I am the former employee. You are not. You have never been a member of the Restore Church of God. So why not contact you? You're a member of the Chamber of Commerce. You're an independent business owner. You want to go. You basically report news and facts, is what, which is what we're doing. I mean, yes, there's a lot. It's it's tinted with um, commentary and experienced you know, information and looking at it from that perspective. But I know you personally. You don't have an axe to grind. You don't hate RCG. So why not? reach out to you and say, excuse me, Don Blue, we want to understand why you want to come. Mark Sabrian can't come. He's a former employee. Fine. Why not contact you and just say, Don Blue, why do you want to come? What is your goal? What is your purpose? But they didn't do that. They didn't do that to me. They didn't do that to you. And so time kept going on. It's like, okay, if they ever contact you, Don, tell them and use this quote, we'll be as harmless as doves. Because that is Bible speak for we will not be a problem. We just want to go to observe. But time went on and time went on and time went on. And during this time, I'm curious about what, what you thought was going on. I, I think that they were debating because we talked about that. And yes, we talked about how we were going to conduct ourselves, you know, as a business owner, wanting to work in the community, help small businesses, the schools, things like that. Uh, to go and make a scene was not the intent. One, I was extremely curious and still am about the property. I mean, I see the outside Beautiful. of it and you hear the stories of the inside. I mean, kind of like a botanical gardens or a Stan Hewitt, you know, I was just curious as to the property. And, you know, everybody talks about when you walk in and you see the big chandelier type thing, that's not gold, but I mean, it's gold looking. I was plated, just curious yeah. to see the the property and to it's gorgeous inside and out gorgeous. make I and I knew that even if we got on the property we'd be monitored um you know obviously no pictures <laughs> if you want anything and I had so he, many photo op opportunity locations for us Don you yeah, have no and, idea and I, like, oh, and I, I did get a shot have, here 
any yeah. point in in mind of running up to somebody even if david pack showed his face to say i i was just curious i just wanted to see the property but you know we we were debating back and forth going you know if they if they are really concerned they can reach out to us which brings to the next point we saw them at the chamber luncheon they had every opportunity to take to the side and say listen why did you sign up? What are your intentions? And I would have stated the truth. I just want to- One week before. Uh-huh. Well, exactly. Like the, it was the Wednesday before where I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but Dr. Tim Ranney is on his way to the coffee and I stand up and say hello. And we shared a smile and a handshake. It's good to see you. I thought, yeah. okay. Ed Winkfield was also there, but I didn't even make eye contact with him. Not because I was avoiding him. I just didn't really see him with the way he was sitting. Yeah, but they had a perfect opportunity at that point to say, hey, you know, I want to ask you a question. We noticed you're on the guest list. Why do you want to do that? And I wondered, are they incompetent? Did they not know we were on the guest list at that point? They must have known because we're at the chamber luncheon. So we're chamber members. Did they? I mean, I thought, OK, they are either in week long meetings where Dave CPAC himself has to be like Caesar and give his thumbs up or thumbs down about whether or not to let Don Blue and that you know, the Antichrist, Mark Sabrion onto the campus, what are the pluses, what are the minuses, or they didn't know. And if they didn't know, that's incompetence, which I, I really find that having a hard time to believe because Dr. Ranny, I mean, he's a smart guy. He's a medical doctor. He's actually a very nice man and has always been very nice to me up until one point. But I was really surprised that they didn't. It's like, wow, maybe they don't know, or maybe we're in the clear and they just want to see, oh, they're bluffing. They'll never show up. I don't know. But it was odd that you bring up the luncheon where they could have had an opportunity to approach us, not confront, not to get in our face, not to create an argument, not to debate. Just like, I'm really curious why you want to go. You know, we could both sip, sip our coffees and say, oh, we're just really curious or whatever, whatever it would have been. But they didn't do that. They chose to be silent and not react. Or, or even just give a warning, like if you try, I mean, you would yeah, think please don't us, come. we were reporting specific facts and, and, you know, you can't give opinions to things that you don't experience or haven't been in, you know, it's just straight up. Um, but the thing is, is that they, they had every opportunity to talk to us and ask what our intentions were or be professional and just just call as a courtesy uh, here we're letting you know but they please don't come did i'm not gonna like force myself if they say don't i would say well at least i hope don blue can go because she's no, not a former employee then we even got the confirmation about it two days before yeah and I, was I thought, like, wow, we're still on the list. Yeah. And I was going to be there late. I go, this is really going to happen. Engagement. We're really so thought, going. Yeah. And it's not like I was going to show up right away. And we got the confirmation. And then, like I said, I had a prior engagement that I had to participate in. And the day of. Oh, the day that will live in infamy for, the day for of, Don Blue and I. Around I. I was so prepared. I was so zen and chill about the whole thing. And like, oh, wow, it's really going to happen. Well, I know what I'm going to wear. And I know, you know, I was meeting one of our, our the guys in our party at the Giant Eagle parking lot. We'll go in together. It'll be fine, you know. And, and then I, I get a phone call from you. But something happened right before that phone. Well, I was a little concerned because I, I, I received double call from chamber um somebody in chamber and um they just were very polite and said you know i i apologize but i spoke to um store church of god and they are rescinding your invitation they said that they notified you um and i'm just letting you know and i i was a little confused because even though i had a prior engagement um, I, I was still checking my emails for work purposes in case, you know, an emergency or something came up and I never received anything. And so I was like, maybe, maybe an error happened. So I got a hold of you. Um, once I was able to go to mm -hmm. lunch and notified you and you looked into it and you didn't get anything. And so nope, I checked out my to email. the rest of our I've been team. sitting with my email open. 
yeah, we mm-hmm. reached out to the rest of the team and nobody from the team was emailed, Facebooked, notified, none. nothing. And then nothing. you went ahead nothing. and made a phone call. Well, after I confirmed that I didn't get an email, I went to the Eventbrite website and my digital ticket was gone. And I realized they just deleted our tickets. So the person, the very kind and thoughtful showing brotherly love person at the Chamber of Commerce had contacted you to make sure you knew, oh, by the way, you're not invited anymore. Now, if she had not called, we would have shown up at the front gate and that would have created a scene because, wait a second, because I had downloaded the PDF ticket on my phone like almost immediately. Yeah, I, I did wanted too. to have a digital copy. So I, I downloaded that like, in August when I had the invite. So I would have gone and I wouldn't even gone to the website, the Eventbrite website. I would have just said, here's my PDF with the little uh, QRL code or whatever they call the little tiny square codes to get in. Oh, you're not allowed to be here. So it could have turned into a whole scene. So I, when I realized that my ticket was deleted, I think I texted you and said, hey, our tickets got deleted and it's off my calendar. So I picked up the phone and I called the main number of the Restore Church of God and left a voicemail for Dr. Tim Ranney, who's in again in charge of PR. And I had just seen him the week before. Smiley, hey, good to see I you. I know, I saw you, you very know, polite. Everything was fine. Yeah. I liked the guy. I always liked him. We got along well. And, you know, seeing him at the luncheon, I felt a little better. Like, okay, well, maybe there's a chance because uh, other friends that, you know, I knew former people were like, oh, there's no way you're getting in. There's no way they'd ever let you on. I'm like, well, so far, so good. No no news is good news. So I left Dr. Randy a voicemail. And then about an hour later, he calls me back. And it was the most curt and firm tone of voice. I, I have never heard the man speak that way. I was getting his like, dad is grounding me voice from him. And I was kind of taken aback. I was trying to be, oh, Dr. Randy, how are you? Good to see, you know, how you, you know, no, right to business, Mark, real busy. You had a, you called me and, you know, you wanted, you have, you said there's some confusion of what's going on. Yeah, because here's how I approached it, Don. I needed to get a phone call back. I said, there's confusion about who can go and who can't go. So I need confirmation because we don't know. We were told we got an email notice, but none of us got an email notice. Can you please give uh, verification? And I knew when I said it that way, that if he didn't respond and I said there was confusion about who could go and who could not go, we might show up anyways. Now, if you want to look at the the dark side, say, oh, are you being manipulative? No, I wasn't intentionally doing that. It was just kind of like there was confusion. I have a ticket, but I'm told I can't go. I was told I got an email notification that you got an email notification and we didn't. I wanted confirmation that like what's going on. Just give me what's going on. So our whole phone call was less than two minutes. He basically made it very clear that they had rescinded our invite. He said an email went out and I said, no, an email did not go out. What I understood from our conversation was that Eventbrite, he assumed, he assumed that we would get some kind of notification that our ticket was deleted and we were moved from the calendar. And that's not what happened. So he didn't even bother to write the email himself to say, you're disinvited. It was just kind of like, well, I'm just going to let the system work it out. It's kind of like, you know, the two Bobs dealing with Milton in the movie Office Space. They're not really going to deal with it. They're just going to kind of, oh, well, we're, we're going to delete you, but we're not going to tell you about it and hope that hope for the best. And I told him we didn't get a notification. He goes, well, let me be clear. You're not invited. I said, okay, can I ask why or what the concerns is? And every answer to every question I had in this very short conversation is, we're not going to talk about it today. We're not going to talk about it today. And I said, okay, Dr. Randy, if we're not going to talk about it today, when? And he says, we're not going to talk about it today. Goodbye. You know, we're done talking. Goodbye. And that was basically it. And so then I called you and let you know what he had said and that we, he said, let me be clear. Let me be clear. You're not invited. And I said, okay, fair enough. I'm not invited, Don, we're not invited. We'll let the other guys know we're not invited. So we were disinvited in a very unprofessional and I would say cowardly, I say cowardly way by deleting our ticket and not having the decency, forget me, but letting Don Blue of how it's done and the other four individuals that have nothing to do with Restore Church of God, that have nothing to do with me personally, and let them know, hey, we've deleted your invite, you know, please, please don't attend. 
Couldn't do that. Couldn't be bothered. Too busy. Not important. Fine. I'm the I'm the wicked antichrist. I can kind of see where I don't deserve that kind of courtesy, that professionalism. When considering I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce, I was invited. I got a confirmation and a ticket. And then the day of, it's just deleted. Okay, fine. But what about Don Blue? What did she do to you? What? Why does she not get some kind of professional respect in the community to say we are disinviting you? You don't have to give excuses. Just a one line sentence, Dr. Tim Randy, a one line sentence, Don Blue, due, due to your animosity against the Restored Church of God, we, we would like to tell you that you are not no longer invited to the event. Period. End of story. Done. Professional. Clear. Not an issue. But that's not what the Restored Church of God chose to do. And I, I, I found that- I was livid. I was mad, not, not because oh, you were livid, <laughs> yes, not, you not were. because of not really being able to go, but because of how it was done. Um, and then later on, I got even more mad because you went to giant Eagle, right. To go grocery shopping, which happened to be their like I don't want to say a grand opening. It was like the revival because they moved things around and, and and just changed it up a little. And there wasn't actually a lot of traffic there. And then I get a picture from you, which was. So during the event, I was planning on, I was always planning, like, oh, I got to go to Giant Eagle, do some grocery shopping. I'll do it after the open house because who knows how long we'll be there. And I'll just, you know, we'll park in the Giant Eagle parking lot, walk over, whatever. So I was always planning going grocery shopping. And then when I found out from Dr. Randy that I was absolutely not going, I decided, forget that. I'm still going grocery shopping. So I drive into the Giant Eagle parking lot and I look over and the first thing I see is a Wadsworth police vehicle parked in front of the front gate right behind where they had a welcome tent. So you cannot help but see a Wadsworth police officer and a vehicle parked at the front gate of the Restored Church of God right across the street from Giant Eagle. And when I saw that, I was I was stunned by that. I can't believe they got a police officer for this. That's, And it's like, wait, is that for us? Is that because we're so bad and so wicked and so crazy that we are a physical danger to the people of Restore Church of God or that we would you know, do what? I mean, there's public property on the sidewalk right up to that front gate. I mean, I, legally, I could have anybody can go up to the to the to the sidewalk where you start seeing the private property signs. So and I know that we've had to deal with with, you know, I'm now one of the kooks, but kooks and, and um, you know, harassers, you, there's a certain line at which the police get involved. And so I know where it's OK to stand. But I didn't come anywhere near that. And so as I'm shopping, I'm just mentally digesting this. Like, wait a second. They hired police for this event. And I go, first of all, that is so dumb beyond comparison as far as optics. Hey, look at us. We're a Christian church. Everybody thinks we're a cult. We can't get inside the gate. We don't allow you to come in and just check us out. But when we kind of have this open house for the first time ever, don't mind the armed security guard at the front gate. I thought from a PR perspective, that was just absolutely stupid. That was dumb. That was just I'm not laughing it looked so bad. It looked so bad. Of how you're explaining it. I'm laughing because I really like I don't think and, and I'm gonna explain this as that there are people who are watching this that are just tuning in that don't even know the area that it is not uncommon to see a police vehicle at a function. They're hired, you know, especially sometimes by law, I believe you have to have security, especially wedding events, alcohol, things like that. So I, I am not shocked at that. Um, I was, I saw that somebody shared information asking about the armed vehicle, well, armed vehicle, a police vehicle at the right. gate so the gate's right here we'll show you the picture the gate's right here and there's the vehicle. you'll show the picture yeah and and then a tent so it's not like it picture. was out directing traffic okay and the no. <laughs> somebody mentioned well haven't you ever seen the police vehicle up on 94 where there's another church christian church and it's rather large they got a school there and that 
And they've had a police vehicle on Sundays, which I can understand why, because that's a high traffic area with so many vehicles coming out. I, I don't know if they hire, I highly doubt it. I believe the city probably does it as a safety measure. Um, Who knows? So, uh, you know, yeah, there you go. But I've never really seen in any other church that that has happened. But the way that this vehicle was staged, it was kind of appalled um, because they've had events. They just had a ministry thing, didn't they? And they didn't have, you know. Ministerial conference. They've, they've never, ever, and I was on, on that campus. We moved on the campus in 2015. They have never done that. They've never sold a house before, and they've never hired an armed policeman to guard the campus. And as I put in my article, I suppose when God's protection isn't enough, you can always hire the Wadsworth Police Department. And I mean, they were and, just you know, doing the their Wadsworth job. Police Department is doing their job. I'm sure the, the officer conducted himself in a very professional manner, did nothing illegal. There was nothing wrong with it. You know, this is mm -hmm. all in the up and up. So it's not wrong for them to do it. It's just ironic and foolish from an optics perspective to be known as the cult that hired an armed guard. Yeah, whether they were hired or or they felt for their safety because of people going on the property. Um, either way, they were asked. And some people mentioned that maybe it was because of traffic, because of giant eagle stuff, and that RCG no didn't want to. No, where they were, it was literally a check in. And I no. personally feel that that wouldn't have been the case if we never signed up and got disinvited. I, I think they maybe had this feeling that. I was going to be a lunatic with you and pull some ninja skills to try to get on that property. Listen, no. As soon as we were told no, we were like, okay, that's fine. I was going to go to Giant Eagle because there's a certain things that I get there. But then after you showed me the picture of the armed vehicle, I was like, I don't know. I, I was just turned sour from the whole thing because the fact is, is this was not not a chamber event this was just chamber members invited to it along with their vendors right and it's not an open house no and to um by definition it's go not ahead and call them basically to call us i was irked even more to find out that like you said we downloaded the tickets and if we were not even told by somebody from there we would have shown up on the property and had possibly an altercation with the police unintentional saying well you were told not to come here why are you come in here and I, I i was shocked because i don't want anything to do with that right um and and i i i was enraged because they took a way out instead of just calling or leaving a message a, a, a quick email a text because you have your number go with it nothing happened we were not told and it took them going to somebody else to contact us that made them i know it made them feel uncomfortable and they kept yeah. apologizing and i was like right i felt bad because it made me feel like you know all the work that we're trying to do um but it was just embarrassing to have to have not to be disinvited but to have that situation of somebody contact us and then we could have shown up on that property and, and possibly had an altercation of not us escalating it but you know whoever was at the tent going to the police going no oh, no no and that's the guy we talked about that's them the officer stopped i mean I, who knows it could have gone really poorly i i am appalled by that you know and the police officer doesn't know the whole story and the 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 reasoning no. that was given was that you were a disgruntled employee. Right, but that, okay, let's say I'm a disgruntled employee. I'd say I'm a little bit more than that. I'm more of an advocate now for, you know, reporting on the, the goings on of Restore Church of God and the false teachings of David C. Pack. I mean, if you really want to frame it. But what about you, Don Blue? You're not a former employee. You're not a former member. Neither were the other four people that we were, that were in under the invite. They have nothing to do with Restore Church of God and was going from a purely you know, business well, yeah. way of doing it. And under clarification, um, that statement was made when the person from Timber was 
contacted as by Dr. Granny said by a reason commerce. And the thing is, is so Classy. what every time somebody <laughs> holds an event that even isn't chamber that chambers invited, if you are a former employee disgruntled, let me be clear, that was the easy way out. Instead of saying, sure. listen, there are certain things said that we're not confronting or answering to. So this is the easy way out that we're going to go ahead and do. I would like to say that to Dr. Rainey or David C. Pack or anybody else, that was extremely unprofessional to go ahead and have to use somebody else to go ahead and contact us when it could have been an extreme altercation of us showing up on the property with downloaded tickets to have a police interaction that yeah. would have been avoided if you would have just Right. called texted said something you never even asked our intentions and to think for a, a minute moment that we would go on your property and do something wrong uh, that's absurd and I, I, you don't want to answer to the questions that the community has had that's fine that's up to you but to use an excuse as a disgruntled employee and then cancel the tickets, have police show up, that looks really bad. That's not professional. So I would like to say to you, yeah. if you ever have an event again and you go to disinvite people, please be Just professional and don't use somebody as a scapegoat because that was not, not cool. And so then he had a sermon and basically, I don't know what the word boasted talked about it and the and the yes. numbers. Yeah, before before we get into what David C. Pack said reported to the congregation about the open house that happened, I want to address the Restore Church of God and how they can conducted this specifically with Dr. Tim Ranney, who's their PR person. He's an he's a, he's a, a straight up guy like. I don't think he's a liar. He's not a fool. He's not a coward. He's not a bad person at all. I think that maybe in wishful thinking that Eventbrite would send the email is what he was hoping, but he didn't get confirmation. He just assumed. So that was bad. The police being there, unless there was some panicked phone call at 930 in the morning when they finally checked the guest list and called the Wadsworth PD. Oh, do you, do you have somebody who's here available who can come here, here at by three or three, three o'clock? So you know, it's like, or they knew it far in advance and planned it all along to have the police there because they knew they were going to disinvite us. I don't know. I'm not a fly on the wall in the room, but I would mm -hmm. like to be. But I, I don't believe that Dr. Ranny intended for the lady at the Chamber of Commerce to contact and reach out and basically do his job for him. I think he would be professionally embarrassed, and he should be, to realize that that lady took it upon herself to show outgoing love and concern for others to make sure that there was no uh, miscommunication or that you and I would show up and it would become a scene. Like, she was looking out for us. I know. I called. I don't think he intended for her to call. I was so upset. I don't think he intended for her to call. I th I don't think he knew she was going to do that. I think he was doing it as a courtesy to the Chamber of Commerce to let them know, hey, there's some members of yours we don't want in here because one of them is disgruntled, so therefore, by association, all of them are. So, in a way, I'm defending Restore Church of God, and I'm defending Dr. Tim Ranney. I don't believe he's incompetent. I don't believe he's a bad guy. And quite frankly, when he leaves the church, he and I can have a beer and discuss about how the whole thing really went down because I do have a theory about somebody else sitting in the room with him to make sure he exuded control and strength to make sure he was firm with me. I don't see him doing that on his own without somebody sitting there making him do it, but I don't know for sure. And Dr. Ranny, whenever you leave RCG, because Dave Pack can't get prophecy right, I will have a beer with you regardless because, hey, man, I like you. And, you know, we got along great. And I would love to rekindle that uh, relationship after you leave Restore Church of God and stop being an enabler and propping up Dave Pack's false teachings. So in a way, I don't think he intended things to go down the way they did, Don. They just escalated because they didn't just write an email to all of us. One sentence officially by Restore Church of God, you're not invited. So I just want to say that. So I'm kind of defending them in a way. To be fair, to be fair, I am. You want to call me disgruntled employee? I accept that. That's fine. But, but poor Don and the other poor you guys. You were a member. 
like they're using the employee, but you were a member and you left the church. I left for religious regions, not employment. Not because of employment. It was the best job I ever had. Why would I quit that? Yeah. I loved it. I loved so it professionally. The clarification there for people when they hear, oh, well, he was a disgruntled employee. No, 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 no. It had nothing to do with his work ethic and what he did for work. He has plenty of tea receipts to say that that was not the case. Yeah. Uh, it was he left as uh, a, a member. member. Because I'm a disgruntled agreed. member would have been more accurate yeah. from, from him, but I don't consider myself disgruntled because when you report on the facts about what David C. Pack is saying and doing, and ironically today is September 16th, which is Elul 20, is another failed prophecy date of David C. Pack, who was pushing that this was, quote, the prophetic backstop for the 10-day kingdom. This is all getting technical. The 10-day kingdom before the Feast of Trumpets. So today is a Dave Pack failure day, one of many marked on my calendar. So it's ironic we're talking about reporting what he says, quoting him accurately. This is what he says, and then reminding people what he just said the week before that contradict what he's saying today, especially when he gets up and does a presumption confessional. I presumed, I presumed, I presumed, I presumed. It's like people aren't listening to that. And because I report that, and because I, you know, pull on his pigtails a little bit, like a kid on the playground, I kind of tease him a little bit. Um, I'm attacking the church and I'm an enemy of God. And so coming from their perspective that I'm an enemy of God, I'm not just a disgruntled ex-member. I'm simply reporting facts and they don't like facts. And now he had a um, sermon over the weekend um, yes. and he mentioned the open house in his sermon. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote a whole article because I knew he was kind of going to to talk about it. Um, not really sure about exactly, you know, what he would say or what his spin was. Um, the the I, I have a quote for him from him directly that I'm going to go ahead and read. This was delivered on Saturday, the Saturday after, in part 392. This is the exact quote talking about the open house. And keep in mind. In my article about the, uh, I called it the unopened house because I proved from the dictionary that what the Restored Church of God did was a private PR event. It was not an open house. An open house invites the public and all comers are welcome. They did not invite the public. They only invited vendors, you know, people they do business with and the members of the Chamber of Commerce. So here's the quote that David P C. Pack used to frame just that assessment. We had an extraordinary meeting on Thursday. The Chamber of Commerce and our vendors and some who were in both came to what turned out to be a truly wonderful event. It lasted about three hours or so. Well attended. Probably a good hundred people came. And to say that they were impressed is the all time, you know, understatement, I guess I would say. So in the article that I write about, it's called Presumption Circus, if anybody wants to read it, because I get into too much detail, I basically break down how to think like David C. Pack thinks, and how to interpret his words through his own personal filter to make what he says true. He called it an extraordinary meeting on Thursday, which means somebody there read my article where I proved that what they did was not an open house. So he didn't call it an open house, because they sold it as an open house. They invited it as an open house. There was a map provided that said open house. Uh, that's its own like comical Disneyland story. But it was a meeting. He described it as a meeting. It's like a meeting. It's like, how is that a meeting? That's, that's, you know, why not call it a, a social or whatever? So, And then he said it was well attended and probably a good hundred people came. Now, what people don't know about David C. Pack, unless you remember the Restored Church of God, is that Dave Pack is kind of an idiot savant when it comes to numbers. Even people that don't like him today that left say that the man knows numbers. I mean, he could be exact. He knows names. He knows numbers. Like, he knows. So when he says probably a good hundred people came, that is fudge because he knows the exact number but didn't want to say it. And so you can draw your own conclusion as to why didn't he say the exact number? Is he going to say 103 people came? Or was it 98 people came? And we're talking about now, keep in mind, the Chamber of Commerce, 1,200 plus possibilities for people from the Chamber of Commerce to come up. 1,200 plus invitations went out. 
So you had 1,200 plus people who were invited, not including vendors, okay? And for a probably a good 100 came, is that well attended? Can any reasonable person go, yeah, wow, you know, less than 10% came. That's a great turnout. I mean, I don't, I'm not a party planner, but if I invited 50 people to my wedding and five showed up, I'd, I'd be like, what's going on here? Maybe uh, I shouldn't have had the crab cakes. So you have to look at that from the, I wouldn't have crab cakes, by the way. Probably a good hundred people is Dave Pack, David C. Pack intentionally withheld the number because he had the exact number and chose not to tell the membership, instead wanted to paint a rosy picture. His well-attended comment is his own personal opinion, a well-attended hundred people, but he's probably the only one who would think and see that. And then the last thing I'll say about that one statement is to people say they were impressed. I've stood in his presence when I was in RCG where he would walk up to somebody and say, well, it's really impressive, right? And what are you going to say? No. So they go, oh, yes, Mr. Peck, it was very impressive. And so in his mind, that person was impressed. And if you rinse and repeat that 10 times, suddenly you have a lot of people saying that they were impressed. So there's ways to read his words now and listen to him. Put on your critical thinking cap and really examine what is he saying, but also what he's not saying. And, and to break it down a little bit more, um, yeah. when you have the hundred some people, there's not saying how many of those were RCG people, employees, members. Or vendors. And the thing of how vendors, many vendors showed and, up. And I know in my experience, vendors, a lot of vendors usually do show up because they want to keep the business. They want to say thank you uh, for giving us your business, you know. And then that's not even saying, okay, so who remembers that went? That's not saying like how many businesses went because sometimes like us, we were going to go with our team and that would have been if everybody went six people. Okay. So there's a lot of That's 6%. We would have been 6% more attendees for Dave Pack's event. 6%, just you, me and our group. Yeah. To put it in perspective. So they lost 6% of their audience. So a hundred ish people not knowing how many are are vendors and and sometimes vendors at that time they may have showed up in their vendor vehicle okay and then you got uh, the workers there three or or members and then you you have the chamber of does that still justify please presence i don't know i mean if they felt that they were going to create a traffic issue because, you know, 261 is right there. I understand. Great for you wanting to have safety. That is awesome. But they weren't directing traffic. They were right at the gate. And I feel that if we would have showed up, it would have been like, why are you here? You were told. If, if, if I were going to take the fully optimistic approach that Restore Church of God did not hire the police officer to keep, namely, me off the campus. And that's kind of... That's why I thought it was so disturbing. It's like, wait a second, are they trying to keep me out? Or is this a, like a warning for Don Blue and I? I go, first of all, that's insane. Now it could be, and I'm gonna throw this out there that I, I actually hadn't considered before. If they invite 1200 people and 1200 people show up at three o'clock, that's a huge traffic problem. And so having a police officer there to direct traffic would have been prudent for them nope, to because do. Because they had to have their ticket and they had confirmation for that. That's true. We don't know how many people accepted the invite and downloaded their ticket. So again, when Dr. Ranny leaves the Restored Church of God, which I hope he does, he and his wonderful wife, they leave, we can talk about this and get all the inside baseball and do a follow-up as to what the behind there the scenes- There were mixed reviews the behind when the I asked other members if they were going, some were, some were excited to go because they just wanted to see the property and others didn't want to step foot on it. I right. mean, it's anybody's want to opinion. Them. Right. I talked to one person who said they didn't want to go only because their presence would endorse what they do. And they, that person fully believed they are not a real Christian church. And so by their presence, they're saying it's okay. But that same person was terribly curious like you were, but was taking a, a moral stand from their own perspective that by not supporting RCG's event, they're basically voting against them. And I kind of see that, that, Think about 1,200 possibilities to show up just from the Chamber of Commerce. 
and a hundred people showed up. Now, if it had been in more than a hundred or far more than a hundred, whatever is reasonable, 140, 150, Dave Pack would have crowed. If there were 800 people that showed up, Dave Pack would have said 804 people showed up. He'd have the exact number. But the fact that it's all held in fog and shade, which is what the RCG way is these days, leads me to believe that Maybe he was counting staff in his own mind, like even people on, you know, on staff who were working, you know, as, you know, guides and security and whatever on the campus. Was he including that hundred? I don't know. Let's just remove all headquarters staff from the 100 and let's just call it an even 100. How many of those are vendors? They have many dozens of vendors for different ways, construction guys, gardening guys, um, you know, plumbers, electricians, anything you can think of that a business would need on a campus that size. How many of them? We won't know. Dr. Randy knows and he could tell me someday, but we don't know. And we will never know because Dave Pack doesn't want anybody to know. Now you were provided with something from that event. And you found uh, something very, I found it very interesting what you discovered. Yeah. So after my article went live uh, that weekend, somebody had received a hard copy uh, version of the map of the open house, the Restore Church of God open house. And the first thing that you notice when you open it, I mean, it's it's kind of when I say Disneyland earlier, it's like Disneyland in scale. It's not meant to be like for architects where that street is exactly. The, it's like it's to let people know where the highlights of the campus are, what to go visit. And from my understanding, people were allowed to quote roam around, but every roaming group had somebody designated with them. So nobody was unattended wandering the campus. So don't think of it as a you get in the door and you get to walk free. Yes, but oh, well, let me, you know, a member from Restore Church of God, let me come and help you. Let me show you around. Let me do this and that. So keep that in mind. And oh, I want to go see this building and I want to go see that building and I want to see this. What was missing from the map that I found interesting was number one, all the houses in the middle of the campus. There was just the smallest cul de sac looking street you could possibly see. It looked like an onk, it was so tiny. No houses. Because they don't want to say, hey, look, this is where Dave Pack lives. Come and take a picture in front of Dave Pack's house. Now, whether people tried to walk that street or not, I don't know whether they were thwarted or just like, hey, you know, that's private property. You don't want to go over there. That's private residence. Is that a respect? Let's not do that. I don't know how that was done. I would assume that. And that's kind of reasonable. It is a personal neighborhood. It is a private neighborhood. So I can understand them wanting to do that, but not having it on the map and then also not having the horses that are housed on the $1.1 million property where the barn and the other house is, is also interesting. And you and I were talking about the reason for why not include the horses. And I thought, well, maybe visually it doesn't look good on a map because it would be more like, you know, the, a panhandle where at the top left of the map, and you know, you'll have this in your video so people can see it. Imagine instead of the map being a big square, the top left quarter, would have this long stretch of land, which is where the horses are. Now, whether people could go see the horses or not, I don't know again, but if they don't see it on the map and they don't know, they wouldn't know to go there. Oh, that's just a big empty field. Oh, I'd rather look at the lake and these little cabins and that kind of thing. So those are two things that were left off the map. And the big fence. What, what fence are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. What fence? The big wooden eyesore fence. Oh, nobody wants to walk along the, the freeway to see that. <laughs> there is a, uh, I want to say 0.4. I mean, I've measured this in my car driving past on on, two, um, on the, the highway right there. There's a giant fence that's along the highway, a wooden fence that was put up last winter that didn't used to be there um, because a windstorm took down some of the sound baffles and, and, and silk screens that were up there, silk or just fabric screens that were used so that Dave wouldn't have to see the freeway and the freeway couldn't see him from his, from his backyard. So they, they built a, a, a fence that's about a wooden fence. that's about a half a mile long along the highway. Nobody wants to see that. I actually forgot about the fence. So thank you for reminding me. I, but that, I drive of course by I wouldn't be on the like, tour. Yeah, they could at least paint it or something, you know? M you know, I'm not a construction guy. Maybe they're letting the wood season before they paint it. I don't know. I would assume it's treated wood, but I also 
it's would love huge. to know the cost of that going in, but you know, I'm not the I'm not the RCG auditor as financials are concerned. I can only base what I report public records. That's where I get my information. I don't have an insider who, you know, slipping me emails about certain private things. And even then, if that happened, I, you know, I already hold back on information that I hear from certain people because I don't want to identify them. And I also don't want to, you know, let anybody think that who writes to me that I'm going to blurt out what they write to me or call me about. So I try to be judicious about what information goes out. And I certainly ask permission before I divulge information from all parties. And in fact, some people this past weekend, I was going to write somebody into an article as part of a story. And I asked them, is that okay? And they said, please don't. And so I just left it all out. Didn't even mention it. So I I'm happy to do that. I'm not here to make anybody uncomfortable, except for David C. Pack, who's a prophetic fraud and a biblical fraud. I don't mind making him feel uncomfortable because what he's doing is, yeah. is, is horrific. And so, but my intent is not to make anybody feel uncomfortable. I'm not doing it out of malice. I don't hate anybody. I don't want anybody to die. I'm not trying to bring RCG down. It's just when stuff is goofy and funny, like this map, and it's like the first pressure, like, oh, it's a Disneyland map. I'm going to poke fun at it, but also point out the facts. There are no horses, there's no ranch and no houses. Interesting. Now, all this information is on your website. Yes. Exrcg.org uh, is the website I started in June to uh, post all my articles, to keep people updated. Um, when a member services posting like went out last night where Dave Pack was trying to explain away how it could possibly be tonight at sunset or maybe the Sabbath. And basically he's continually walking back what he just taught, forgetting what he just said and how strongly he said it. And I just simply report that. And so if people are interested, they can go to exrcg.org. I also have a Facebook group that has notifications. Um, X restored website. I think I had to keep names differently just because of the way the Facebook won't let you have so many acronyms. So I kind of had to do it that way, but yeah, it's a, the audience is getting bigger. I'm having more and more people who leave or people that I used to know people I never knew. I got an email this morning from somebody who said, I just resigned. And, you know, what do you think? You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to be a, a hub of information specifically about the Restored Church of God, which is how I'm different from the band by HWA website. They're all churches of God that are splintered off from the Worldwide Church of God under Herbert W. Armstrong. I focus on the Restored Church of God. And the only reason I care about the Restored Church of God and the teachings of David C. Pack was because I gave them nine years of my life. I was a member from 2012 to 2021, I was a headquarters staff member. So I met people, I knew people, I had experience and that's, and there's people that I still care about that are there. There was a lot of really wonderful people still in the Restored Church of God. They don't know what to do. They're confused. It doesn't make sense. You know, I, I've, I know that the mechanism for, um, I guess you could say coping is to not even listen to Dave Pack messages. Some members inside the Restore Church of God don't even listen to the Dave Pack messages. And I would love, love, love to get the numbers from website services. When a, when a video is posted, how many people actually watch it and how many people actually download it? Because the only way people can just say, you know, I can deal with this is by ignoring it. And by ignoring the problem, they're able to cope and try to read their Bible and study and pray and fast and hope that Jesus gets here. And cross their fingers that maybe Dave Pack one day will be right. The problem is he'll never be right. Now, um, we'll report back when we, you know, have more info. Uh, There'll always be more info. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and to clarify what Mark said, um, you know, there has been people in the community or former members that are like, why 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 not just move on why report on this there's plenty of other churches why is this church so important there's other cogs because we can only report on facts that we have and people that are talking i can't just go to another church and just be like oh my gosh did you hear no we have to have facts we have people that are, are willing to come and talk about it 
-hmm. and particularly why does it matter mm -hmm. because in in Yes, it is people's choices to hand over their money. It is um, people's choices to stay there. But when you are ran by an authoritarian leader who basically scares you of the outside world, if you leave the church and what's going to happen to you, and then, you know, gives a plea asking for financial funds that has to go towards another property, but doesn't tell you that's disturbing and and also in the fact of you know what does it matter what they do with their money it doesn't i mean really it doesn't affect me but personally i know that it's affecting other people because they're being duped as is to where their money is going and if it is true that you know those who are paying rent aren't paying the full amount you know because obviously they can't afford it and the church has to bite the bullet on the rest then those are members who are suffering until, you know, one of his predictions comes true that they're all funding all this, this great glory of a land. And that's not right. You know, and he, and he preaches certain things that are racist as in, you know, I know everybody has their mixed opinions, but personally I feel and, and talk to others that have talked about the British Israelism, um, you know, just in regards to things like that. And so that's why we do not report on other things and only this one. So when we have more information, you know, we'll of course get it to you, bring it to you. Um, if you have anything that you need to talk to Mark about, uh, again, his information is on his website. There's also a Facebook page that he has. Um, Besides uh, what we have uh, to go ahead and give, he writes a lot of articles. Um, they're in depth. He gives the facts and, and the proof behind that. Um, With a little snark from time to time. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and yeah, and to those that are from other COGS, we're only reporting on, on what we have here. It's, right. it's not like we're picking and choosing to go after churches. A, a, a church is allowed to do as they please. But when you take advantage of members and give a date and then purchase a property that I, I, I don't, I mean, if you were housing homeless people or things like that, I could see that. But that's money that's not going back into the community to help. That money is not going to help the members that, that need it because obviously they're not rich. They're giving over all their money, so. It was all about the lawn. I refer to it as the half million dollar lawn because that's what's important to Dave Pack, a pretty yeah. lawn. That's why he bought the house, period. So if you are a former member or a current member, or current member leaving, um, you have experience and we'd like to do an interview, uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we have ways to make sure that if you do not want your face shown, we can go ahead and do that. We can make arrangements to where your voice isn't shown. Um, we're just trying to get out the facts. We're trying to help other former members. Um, Mark is part of an extraordinary group of former members, uh, basically a support group, I, I guess you could kind of put it because you know, people are like, well, it was their choice. It's their problem. You have to realize, though, that basically the majority of people that leave these types of churches or, or any organization that has, you know, I guess you could say psychological issues going on, being afraid to leave. And, and most of these people spending their, their lives with these groups to leave. It's hard. It's like asking a domestic violence victim why why didn't you just walk out the door <laughs> you were exactly in their the position you weren't in their situation you don't know some people deal with it in different ways some people shut the door you know uh some people go ahead and seek help it just really depends so um i would really reach out to mark he has a lot of resources if you're looking to talk to specific people look for resources yep. to help heal um and we thank you guys for participating in this series and we know we'll get constructive criticism but that's that's fine <laughs> um again hey, well, Don, one more thing yes to, to, to let all the po folks inside the restore church of god you're not alone not everyone is an antichrist who wants to murder you think for yourself listen to what dave pack says read your bible and believe it 
The answers are there right in front of you. You're not alone. You know, reach out, ask questions, ask your minister questions. And when you get trouble or in, in trouble or talk to them, uh, talking to from them because you're asking about a Bible concept. Ask yourself, is this the church I joined years ago? Is this the same spirit driving the church? So I appreciate the members of Wadsworth community, and my heart goes out still to the members of the Restore Church of God. There are people that's trapped in there because they don't know what else to do or where to go. I don't know where to go. I just know that Restored is not the right place. Yeah, and, and there are not, I know that maybe some former members or current members, they see things on social media this keyboard warriors but in all honesty there's nobody out there against you there's nobody that's going to harm you and nobody is is out there to get in your face and judge you if you right. feel that there's something wrong you have the right to reach out and and speak to people and please by all means if, if you don't realize how many people have trickled out of the woodworks to contact mark um dennis other people uh just know that you're not alone um, and they are very good about uh, confidentiality. So until we have more information, until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>